For today's video, we are going to talk about what is geometric sequence and we are going to find out how to find the nth term of a geometric sequence. First, let us define what is geometric sequence. So when we say geometric sequence, it's a sequence with a common ratio. That is what we call geometric sequence. For example, we have 2, 4, 8, 16. 2, 4, 8, 16 is an example of geometric sequence. So the first term is 2, the second term is 4, the third term is 8, the fourth term is 16. So since the second term is 4, it's obtained by multiplying 2 to the first term. So that is 2 times 2 is 4. The third term is 8. It's obtained by multiplying 2 to the second term, that is 4 times 2 is 8. And then, the fourth term is 16. It's obtained by multiplying 2 to the third term, that is 8 times 2 is 16. 2 is what we call the common ratio. To find common ratio, simply divide the second term to the first term. That is, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Or, you can use 8 divided by 2, or 8 divided by 4 rather, that is 2. And, 16 divided by 8 is 2. So, therefore, 2 is our common ratio. Again, to find common ratio, simply divide the second term to the first term. That is our common ratio. But how do we find the next three terms? So to find the next three terms, simply multiply the common ratio to the last term. So that is 16 times 2 is 32. So 32 times 2 is 64. And then 64 times 2 is 128. So to find the next three terms, simply multiply the common ratio to the last term. So let's have an example. We are going to find the common ratio and give the next three terms. For example, 3, 6, 12. First, let us find the common ratio. Common ratio, it is denoted by small letter r. So to find common ratio, simply divide the second term to the first term. That is 6 divided by 3. So the common ratio here, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So therefore, the next three terms in the sequence 3, 6, 12, that is 12 times 2 is 24. Then 24 times 2 is 48. And then 48 times 2 is 96. So these are the next three terms in a sequence 3, 6, 12. What about number 2? 1, 2, 4, 8. So let's find the common ratio. So we divide the second term to the first term. 2 divided by 1. So the common ratio is 2. Then the next three terms are 8 times 2. That is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. So these are the next three terms in the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8. What about number 3? Go ahead and find the common ratio and give the next three terms. We have negative 8, negative 4, negative 2, and 1, negative 1 half. So let us find first the common ratio. So that is negative 4 divided by negative 8. That is positive one half. So since we have one half, one half times negative one half is negative one fourth. Negative one fourth times one half is negative one over eight. We simply multiply numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. Negative 1 over 8 times positive 1 half is negative 1 over 
16. So these are the next three terms of the sequence negative 8, negative 4, negative 2, negative 1 half. What about number 4? On number 4, we have 1, negative 3, 9, negative 27. So to find the common ratio, let's divide negative 3 by positive 1. So the answer is negative 3. So the common ratio is negative 3. Now, let us find the next three terms. Negative 27 times 3, or negative 27 times negative 3 is positive 81. Positive 81 multiplied by negative 3 is negative 243. Then, negative 243 times negative 3 is 729. So, these are the next three terms of the sequence 1, negative 3, 9, negative 27. What about number 5? So, let us find first the common ratio. 6 divided by negative 12. So, that is negative 1 half. Now, let us find the next three terms. 3 over 2 times negative 1 half. That is negative 3 over 4. Next, negative 3 4 times negative 1 half. That is positive 3 over 8. And then, 3 over 8 times negative 1 half. That is negative 3 over 16. So these are the next three terms in the sequence negative 12, 6, negative 3, 3 over 2. Since we already know how to find the common ratio and how to find the next three terms, let us proceed to the formula of geometric sequence. So the general formula for geometric sequence a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. Where a sub n will be the last term, a sub 1 will be the first term, n is the number of terms, and r is the common ratio. So let's have an example. On example number 1, we are going to find the indicated terms in each geometric sequence. So number 1, we have sequence 6, 12, 24. So a sub 1 is 6. R, that is 12, divided by 6 is 2. And N is 5. Now, to find the fifth term, we are using formula. A sub N will be the last term equals A sub 1 times R raised to N minus 1. Now, let us simplify. We have A sub 5. A sub 1 will be 6 times ratio, which is 2, raised to 5 minus 1. So we have 6 times 2. 5 minus 1 is 4 equals 6 times 2 raised to 4 that is 16. Therefore, 6 multiplied by 16 is 96. So a sub 5 or the fifth term is 96. What about for number 2? We have sequence 1, 3, 9, 27, and we are looking for the 6th term. So a sub 1, that is 1. Ratio, that is 3 divided by 1, that is 3. And then n is 6. So we are using formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. So a sub 6 equals a sub 1 which is 1 times ratio which is 3 raised to 6 minus 1. So we have 1 times 3 raised to 5. Then let us simplify. We have 1 times 3 raised to 5. You are going to multiply 3 5 times to itself. That is 243 times 1. So, the sixth term is 243. So, this will be our final answer. What about number 2? 
we have negative 40, negative 20, positive 20, negative 10, 5. We are looking for the 11th term. So we have a sub 1, which is negative 40. And the ratio, that is 20 divided by negative 40, that is negative 1 half. And then n is 11. Then let us substitute the given value to the formula, which is a sub n equals a sub 1 times or r raised to n minus 1. So a sub 11 equals a sub 1 is negative 40 times r that is negative 1 half raised to 11 minus 1. So negative 40 times negative 1 half raised to 11 minus 1 is 10. Then, let us simplify. Negative 40 times. So, since we have negative 1 half raised to 10. So, since the exponent is even number. Whenever we have an even number, we are, we are going to have a positive. And whenever we have an odd number, we are going to have a negative sign. So, since it is an even number, that is 1 over. You are going to multiply 2 10 times to itself. That is 1024. And then, let us simplify our answer. So we have negative 40 times 1 is negative 40. 1024. So since we have negative 40, 1024. Since we have a fraction, can be written in simplest form. So negative 40 and 10, uh, 1024 is divisible by 8. So let us divide by 8. So negative 40 divided by 8 is negative 5 over 10, 000, uh, 1024 divided by 8. That is 128. So the 11th term is negative 5 over 128. What about the last number? 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 half. And we are looking for the 7th term. So first, we have a sub 1, that is 8. Ratio, that is 4 divided by 8, that is 1 half. And we are looking for the value of n, that is 7. So we have here, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r raised to n minus 1. So a sub 7 equals a sub 1, that is 8, times ratio, that is 1 half, raised to 7 minus 1. So we have 8 times 1 half raised to 6. Then let us simplify. We have 8 times 1 raised to 6, that is 1. 2 raised to 6, that is multiplying 2 6 times to itself. That is 64. And then let us simplify our answer. So 8 times 1 is 8 over 64. 8 over 64 can be written in simplest form. So therefore, a sub 7 is 1 over 8. So this will be our final answer.